Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So um, today's video is for a friend of mine whose name is also Nicole. Um, however, I call her Nick. Um, yeah, we just, she's awesome. And um, she had asked me to film a video um, regarding like just an everyday kind of a look, especially for someone that maybe doesn't want to do a crazy winged eyeliner, which I completely get because winged eyeliners are really fun, but they're not for everyone and they're not for every day. So um, I wanted to film something just, you know, that you could do to basically give yourself contour and color um, and all that, but not have to go super over the top. So, Let's get ready. Um, I want to use today the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation, and I have two colors here, Cream Whip and Golden Neutral. And the reason being is because it's I haven't found one that I particularly like in just one color that covers me, but together these two are great, and Golden Neutral is really nice because it mixes in a golden kind of suntan finish for me. Um, they're both full coverage foundations. Well, Clinique Beyond Perfecting, I should say, is full coverage. It's a full coverage, long wearing foundation. It is a bit more hydrating, but it's a great product. Um, it's a foundation and foundation and concealer in one that says it covers um, thoroughly with a very lightweight feel, naturally flawless look for all day wear. Um, you can use it all over or to spot correct, and it has this well, mine's coming apart here, but it has a DOFA applicator. And um, I've had Cream Whip for a while now because I was very fair. Um, but obviously with the sun and the summer, I've been a little bit deeper. So I like the mixture of both. But, okay, this is where I have to be extra because even though this is a natural look, I'm extra. Um, I'm gonna mix a little Cover FX Power Play foundation into the mix today. And this is in N25, which is a neutral tone. So um, the Clinique foundations tend to pull a little bit golden on me. So this will help just put a little bit of pink in there, but not enough that it's gonna turn my face pink. Moving onward, um, because we're mixing today, I wanna prep my skin really well. I've actually done all my skincare and I received a sample of La Mer Soft Cream and I've been working with that and my skin feels really plumped up and ready to go. Uh, but I do wanna add a little bit of pore control and coverage. So I think I'm actually going to add in Peter Thomas Roth, I have a sample of Skin to Die For. It's a mattifying primer and perfecter, but it really does wonders for pores. So I don't care so much about no shine or glow because I'm fine with that. But I like the pore coverage and the smoothness that I get with this. So I'm just gonna rub this all around the areas that I know these pores are out of control. And for most of us, it's in this area here. Some people may have none, some people may have a ton, but this is a really great priming tool and skincare product to have. Um, I really like it. And I'm a big fan of using products only where you need them so you don't have to put this all over if you don't have pore problems all over. Um, it's really up to you. It has a slight skin tint as well, so I feel like it really helps to blur the skin and it just preps it beautifully. Now on the rest of my face, I want a little bit more radiance. I do have the La Mer cream on, which is extremely hydrating, but my skin gets so dry sometimes, it sucks it right up. So I'm gonna add um, Radiance Primer from Laura Mercier, which has a pretty peach kind of undertone to it. And I'm kind of focusing this on the outside perimeter I like to go a little bit on my nose, a little on my chin, but mostly the outside perimeter and my neck for this, just to add some more radiance and glow to my skin. So with the Clinique, I'm gonna focus the Cream Whip color more along the inside of my face because that's generally lighter. So I'm just kind of doing little dots and pressing this on the inside. And I'm also gonna come down the center of my neck with this. And then I'm gonna mix golden on the perimeter. Right 
along the cheekbones and then on the um, neck as well because I want to pull all of these colors together all right now that I look like I have the plague um, <laughs> I'm gonna come into my cover FX power play and I'm just taking a small amount of this on the back of my hand because what I'm gonna do is pop it onto this um, curved angled it cosmetics brush this is a foundation brush and it's synthetic so I really like the way that this kind of buffs and pushes the foundation into the skin gives it a really nice full coverage so even though this eye makeup like I said is gonna be more of something you can wear daily I have to do full coverage on my face it's just something that I love to do this part I do with the beauty blender just because it'll shear out anything that looks streaky or cakey but it'll also continue to add a little bit more coverage to the skin and get us nice and flawless I like this foundation the Clinique because you can layer it very nicely without it feeling super heavy all right going into concealer I'm going to use my Kylie cosmetics for the darker under eye circles oh we have a guest appearance from Julian Say hello world hello. hey world what's up I'm Jules I'm cute <laughs> Jules And now I'm going in with Makeup Revolution along the sides of my nose, along my brow bone. This is like down to the nitty gritty because I use it so much. <laughs> I'm going to use a Morphe G40 just to start blending out and then I'll go back in with a beauty sponge. One thing I have to say is if you have mature skin but you still love a good coverage, Beyond Perfecting is definitely a great foundation choice, I think. Um, because I know many women who are older than I am that really love this foundation and um, even my mom mom's in her 60s I'm in my 30s she loves this foundation as well so I think this is a great choice for a mature woman okay so I am going to now go in with another real technique sponge and just gently press this all over to make sure that my concealer and my foundation look like one. I'm gonna use that Real Technique sponge now and start baking my under eyes with my Derma Blend powder. Down on my chin. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go, go and hop into eyes first before the rest of my face. And to do that today, we're gonna use Juvia's Place Palettes Saharan 1 and 2, which I feel have a great variety of colors for all different skin tones. And you have quite a few little like neutrals and soft colors that you can use every day. And then of course, you know, 
based on what your skin color is, your skin tone, you can kind of tinker and adjust. So um, the first thing I wanna do always, I start out with a fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into um, the color Lulu, which is a really soft pink color. And we're just gonna place that right into the crease. Just fluffing a little bit out here just to add just a little pop and I'm actually going to take a little bit of this as well and just dust it across my lids now I'm gonna go into my Morphe MB23 brush and gonna pick up this color Katsina, which is a soft kind of like teddy bear brown. And this is still a rather fluffy soft brush, but it's a little bit more tapered. So it's just gonna add a little more definition to this crease. I'm gonna pull a little bit on the outside corner as well. Not all over the lid like we did with the pink, but definitely round it into the outside corner here. Now I just wanna intense the crease a little bit more, so I'm gonna take an M441 and I'm actually gonna go now into Saharan um, 2, and we are gonna take the color, I think it's pronounced Taza. Down here, it's still kind of in that warm brown family. Instead of like a softer kind of medium brown, we're going a little bit deeper into a richer kind of, mm, it's almost like an orange brown. It's really different, it's a pretty color, but I'm gonna, kind of tap a lot of this out. I wanna work it into the bristles, but I don't want there to be a whole lot of product on here. And then very gently, we're gonna start in the outside corner and just kind of loop this around the corner into the crease and then very gently pull whatever's left in. Um, but now we want to go in and soften this so you can either take a fluffy brush just plain nothing on it Or you can dip it into a softer lighter color. I'm gonna go back into Lulu personally this pink and Just use a little bit of that To taper down you can even take your brush into a little bit of translucent powder Which is another trick and it'll help to just kind of diffuse it and soften your crease and we're just dusting this into our crease and just kind of toning the colors down a little bit so it's not so strong. Just kind of come in and just clean the brow area. But now you can see you have this beautiful color on your eye, but it's still soft enough that you could get away with this, I think, for every day. And you could even skip that darker brown and just use the two-tone colors for a more softer natural finish. Girl, you know I'm gonna go extra. You know there's a third step whenever it comes to my eye makeup. I just have to, I have to. I always say I'm gonna be eh, soft and natural. No, no, there's always at least two to three to four shadows. It's just inevitable. But anyway, so now what I wanna do is go into Saharan 2. And there is this really pretty champagne gold and it's called Aziza. And it has a very like off-white base but it has little flecks of gold champagne. And I'm just gonna take this on a Laura Mercier all over brush, work this into the bristles. And I just wanna highlight my inner corner 
and my brow bone. So I'm gonna start with the inner corner. And this is a fairly large brush, so you can work with a smaller brush, but I kind of want this color to pop onto the lid a little bit. So I'm gonna go inside corner and then right to the front of the lid to really warm up that inside. And then also a tad right at the arch of the brow bone. You can smooth this in with your finger, but it's a really soft, creamy color. And I just think it's really beautiful for brightening. Let's hop back into Saharan. And what I wanna do is take this color Zoya, which is almost kind of bronzy pink. It's not quite a rose gold, but it's definitely got like a soft kind of bronzy champagne finish. And we're just gonna press this with our finger into the lid. And what I'm doing is placing this color pretty much in the center. We have this brighter color here. We have the darker colors here. I'm just kind of placing this in between the two with my finger just to add a hint of color. I'm not even gonna worry about fixing it with a brush. I just want a little wash in the center of my lid. I want it to pretty much look like skin, but with a glow. Now, next step's totally optional. You guys don't have to do this. If you wanna stop here, you can stop here. I am going to actually go in with a pencil brush and line underneath my lash line. Personally, on days that I don't wear eyeliner, Unless I'm literally just mascara out the door. If I do shadows but I don't want liner, I usually do a shadow underneath. So I'm gonna start with Katsina, which is that teddy bear brown. And I'm gonna grab this on an E30 from Sigma. And just start actually in the front, my lower lash line and work my way to the back. Now we're gonna go back into Saharan too, and we're gonna go back into that Taza color, or Taza, and we're just gonna take a little bit of that now on the same brush, and I'm gonna start this time from the outside corner and work my way in, still underneath the lash line. And then at the very end, I'm just gonna kind of flick this up into the crease color. Just to give it a little bit of a wing. All right, now we have this great look. I'm just gonna clean up my under eyes a little bit because sometimes when I do shadow on the lower lash line, I get fallout. So I'm just gonna take a brush that has a very tiny bit of translucent powder because we already have that bake there. And I'm just adding a little extra powder and we're gonna dust away the bake and the fallout at the same time. But now you guys know I'm gonna go into my Revolution Pro HD Contour Palette and I'm gonna contour in bronze, but I don't really wanna show that because today is really more about the eye look. So I'm gonna just kind of cut that and then we'll meet back in a few minutes, seconds, a flash, <laughs> and we'll meet back and continue the rest of our face together. Okay, so we are contoured and we are bronzed. Really quickly, I wanna go in to the powder highlight using my Makeup Revolution powder. Again, I mix the yellow and this kind of off-white pink together on a Morphe sponge, and I just love the combination. I love a good powdery, soft highlight on the cheekbone and then whatever is left I just bring underneath the eye and kind of in this inside pocket here just to really soften and brighten underneath my eyes and you can see it like right away once you use it it's just like whoa baby bright I love that 
Now I'm gonna go into blush, and blush is gonna be, again, blush to teal. This is Blushing Trezor from Lancome, and it's a beautiful mix of a peach and a pink, so it's a salmon, my favorite word. <laughs> um, so it's like a salmon pink. But it's perfect for people that have pinks or redness in their skin because um, sometimes just, you know, as the day progresses, makeup can break apart or it can soften and some of your natural color will come through the foundation. And this is great to put on because it warms up your skin tone, but it's not so pink, it's not so red that it's going to make you look like you drank a gallon of Merlot, okay? So this is like the perfect tone kind of like the NARS um, orgasm tone, I think is pretty much similar. Um, and it's just a beautiful color to brighten up the cheeks. If you're a rosy girl like me, and you just get this beautiful warmth and glow on the cheek. And that's why I don't really do a glow highlighter because I feel like this blush glows and blushes for me. Now I'm going to go in and just take a comb and just kind of brush up my brow hairs. This helps remove any kind of powder or product, but it also helps you to see the arch of your brow. And truly, I have to say the one thing that I personally feel like I want to work on as an artist and just in general is learning how to do my brows differently. Um, I watch tutorials just like you guys. I watch actual artists that I work with um, for different companies and I, I watch them work. And it's truly an art, I think, to get it down precisely. I mean, Mario Dodovanovic can do it like probably with his eyes closed. So anyway, I've been trying different techniques. One thing I like is really just going in freehand and feathering, um, but it does take time and practice. And so definitely um, take your time, go slow, less is more with brows. You don't need to go so strong and so bold. Um, I really love ColourPop's brow pencil and this is black and brown. Now my root color is very dark even though I do have pink and highlights throughout my hair, but I like a nice strong color as far as my brows because it's closer to my hair color. All right, this is a great product though, super skinny tip here just like the Anastasia brow is and I find that it's even more pigmented than Anastasia and it's cheaper can't go wrong so I am literally going in and just kind of where I see I have sparse areas just very gently feathering in and it's almost like you're doing it on an angle so I want to follow the shape that I naturally have So I'll tend to go a little bit stronger right at the tail. And then go in, take your spoolie, blend a little bit, and now you got the base of your brow. When I don't do eyeliner, I definitely like to do my brows. I feel like it completes the look more. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of the hair down Just very gently because you don't want to move too much brow product or else you're gonna look a hot mess but I like to take that and then starting at the edge again make individual strokes and just create some more fullness by doing that into the top portion of your brow And then we're just gonna go in and pull the brows back up very gently. But I'll go in the front and just kinda toy around a little bit. And then just go in, like I said, anywhere else that you see any more gaps and just truly go in and try to clean them up. 
And then sometimes I'll go back in. Um, this is like, you can use it for lashes or you can use it for brows. Um, your, you know, comb, your lash comb, brow comb. And I'll sometimes just go back in with this because it's a little bit fluffier. And just soften the color again. All right, so those are on and set. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of my NYX Control Freak Brow clear brow gel and just make sure that I put the gel on. I start at the tail and then I come in and just kind of fluff. All right, that's it for the brows. And now I wanna go in and curl my lashes using my Tweezerman Rose Gold Lash Curler. Lashes today are, of course, my Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. I love this one. Use whatever mascara you like. I like Dior Show a lot, too. It's a little pricey, though. Mama's on a budget. I always tilt my head. I swear, I look crazy when I put mascara on. I think we all do. It's so hard to look hot and put mascara on, let's be real. Okay, so now that that is on and set, I'm going to reset my makeup a little bit using my Mac's, MAC Fix Plus Pink Light. And this just kind of breaks up some of the powders and just kind of resets the makeup for you. These little cardboard like samples you get when you order stuff online great fans for Mac Fix Plus or any type of setting spray. <laughs> Alright guys, so last but not least is our lips and because this is pretty much a softer look, step up from your just natural everyday look. Um, we'll call this the step up look. <laughs> but not the total glam. Um, I like to pick a lip liner that's fairly soft, but also kind of nude, close to lip color. And I love Laura Mercier's Hazelnut Tea. Um, this is just their you know, lip pencil collection, and this is a beautiful kind of everyday color. And um, I just feel like it works well with a lot of different eyeshadows. So I'm gonna pop this on and line my lips. Yeah. Relax yourself, girl, be set to man. 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 Relax yourself. Okay, so once you have your lip liner on, lips filled. Just go in with a little bit of a lip gloss. And for me, I'm gonna use ColourPop Charming because it has that really pretty gold fleck, kind of similar to the inside corner eyeshadow. And I'm just gonna place this in the center of my bottom lip. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. And I am living for it. <laughs> Always, always loving for it, guys. I really, really love the combination of these shadows and just that spark and glow in the inside corner. Um, I like having a really strong brow when I don't, like I said, do a lot as far as liquid eyeliner and stuff like that. But this is a great step up from an everyday look. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Maybe it taught you something. Maybe you already knew. Maybe you just enjoyed watching me. Maybe you don't like me. I don't know. But if you do, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will link my information down below. Instagram, Snapchat, all that good stuff. And of course, honorable mentions. Always put the good products down below that I really, truly love. This Clinique foundation is beautiful. I really do love it, guys. I highly recommend it. Um, especially, like I said, if you have mature skin, if you have drier skin, and um, if you have more yellow based <laughs> skin it's really good too um, but I do really love the foundation a lot and of course Juvia's Place you guys know those 
are my palettes. I just like flock to them and the Morphe palettes and they're super affordable too. And I'm all about that. So anyway, again, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you again really soon. Okay guys, so I'm checking in. This is the real real right now. Um, no filter, straight up video, post-workout. This foundation has pretty much stayed put. I am a little greasy and shiny, but today was leg day and um, 30 minutes of cardio. So I am pretty impressed. And I had to do a little check-in just so you guys could see how this makeup lasts. Um, it's been a few hours since I put on my makeup and everything. So I definitely think this is a good everyday go-to foundation. And I look. Girl, girl, huh? well, honey, you 